Om Namo Narayanaya. Happy Holi to all of you. In this fun festival, we play with color, putting it all over our friends. We share sweets and have fun and decorate. And we fill our lives with joy and color. But let's take a minute to remember the reason why this festival came about in the first place. And the reason is a child, a child who's brave and true and honest, a child named Pralad. Now Pralad's father was a king named Hiranyakashipu, and he had so much power and he had a beautiful kingdom, but he wanted more. So he prayed to Brahma and when Brahma Dev appeared, he said, Brahma Dev, I wish to become immortal. Brahma Dev said, that's not possible for anyone. Ask for something else. And Hiranyakashipu thought, and he said, I know, I wish that I cannot be killed by man or by beast. I cannot be killed in the daytime or at night. I cannot be killed indoors or outdoors. And no weapon can kill me. That should take care of everything. Brahma Dev granted him the boon. And Hiranesh Kashipu returned to his kingdom, thrilled with all his power. And he provided for all the people in his kingdom. He gave them plenty of food and drink. He gave them beautiful homes and provided for their every need. And then he told them all, now look, who gives you anything that you desire? Who provides for your life's comforts? It's me, Hiranyakashipu. So put aside all these gods and goddesses that you're worshiping. I am the one true God, and I am all who you need to believe in. And so the people, what could they do? They liked having money and things. So they put away their Durga Mata, they put away their Shiva, they put away their Vishnu, and they said, Om Hiranyakashipu Aya Namaha. And Hiranyakashipu was very happy. Now his child, Prahlad, grew, he was about maybe five or six, and one day Prahlad heard someone walk by the palace singing, Om Namo Narayanaya. And Prahlad looked around and he saw someone walking by who was carrying a veena in his hand and strumming it and had a beautiful garland on. And the most important thing about him is that he looked blissfully happy. And Prahlad said, excuse me, what are you saying? And the sage said, I'm saying the name of Narayan. Narayan? Who are you? And who is this Narayan? And so the sage said, well, my name is Narad. And let me tell you about Narayan. And Narad Muni described Narayan, the preserver of the universe, who takes care of everyone, every person's needs, while appearing to sleep on a serpent in the middle of a dark ocean. This Narayan, who is covered in yellow silk and holds a discus in his hand, the one who preserves and protects all, that is who I pray to, Prahlad, and you can too. Say it after me, Om Namo Narayanaya. And Prahlad repeated it and it gave him so much peace. So after Narad Muni left, Prahlad went through the palace singing his newfound mantra, Om Namo Narayanaya. And Hiranyakashipu heard it and he said, stop, what is this nonsense? Where did you hear this from? And Prahlad told him, Hiranyakashipu said, hmm, yes, I thought something like this could happen. It's time to start your education. And so he sent Prahlad to the school in his kingdom in which all the children came to study. And he had given the teacher strict instructions that even if my son says some nonsense, ignore him, push all this other not iron nonsense out of his head and teach him only to revere me. So Prahlad sat among all of the students and the teacher began teaching and he said, let us begin with a prayer to our king and the one who provides for us all, Hiranyakashipuaya Namaha. And before any other student could start to say that, Prahlad said, teacher, I have a question. And the teacher said, what? Well, my father may be the king, but he's not the one who provides for all of us. He doesn't give us this air that we breathe or the water that we drink. That comes from the divine power. It comes from Vishnu. It comes from the earth around us. It, it's not my father. 
And the teacher looked at all the other students. The other students looked a little puzzled. And the teacher said, no, no, think about it. Everything that you, you've eaten today has come from your father's granary. And your father has provided these wonderful fruits and the clothes that you wear. Everything comes from Hiranyakashipu. Prahlad said, but my father ordered farmers to plant the seeds. And farmers may have planted the seeds, but who made that teeny tiny seed grow into a plant? And that plant yielding all these grains and, and thousands and thousands of grains. And the water that we drink, who makes it rain? And who makes the rivers flow? That's not my father. And all the other students said, you know, he has a point. And they started to mumble amongst each other and ask the teacher more questions. Well, what about the sun in the sky? Did the king put that there? And the teacher became very disturbed. He didn't want students who asked him questions. He just had a job to do. And he said, look, believe whatever you want. But all you have to do is say, Hiranyakashipu is the provider. Hiranyakashipu ayanamaha. And the student said, we won't say it. We won't lie like that. Prahlad has shown us that that's not true. So the teacher threw up his hands, dragged Prahlad back to the palace and told Hiranyakashipu, I can't do anything to your son. He's corrupting all my other students. Please, I, 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 can't, I can't do it. I, please forgive me. Hiranyakashipu got angry. So you think you can run your mouth and say whatever you want and try to turn everyone against me? Well, I'll show you. And he called his guards and he said, throw this child from the highest mountain in the kingdom. And so the guards took Prahlad up to the top of the mountain and Prahlad just said, Om Namo Narayanaya. And then when they shoved him down from the mountain, they couldn't believe their eyes. An eagle came out of nowhere and swooped up with Prahlad on his back and landed him safely outside the palace. They came back to the king and the king saw Prahlad walking toward him unscathed and he thought, I have to think of something else. Ah, he got the deadliest, angriest elephant in the kingdom. And he said, put Prahlad in front of this elephant. And Prahlad stood in front of the elephant and said, Om Namo Narayanaya. And the elephant charged toward him. And just as he was about to crush him with his feet, he stopped. And he took his trunk and he bowed to Prahlad. And Prahlad just kept chanting the name of Vishnu. Now, Hiranyakashipu thought, and he remembered his sister. His sister was named Holika, and Holika had a special boon. Fire could not burn her. So Hiranyakashipu called everyone in the kingdom to the center of the, of, in front of his palace. He had a huge pyre made, wood stacked up higher and higher, and he called his sister, and he called Prahlad. Holika, sit with Prahlad on your lap and let me light the fire. Everyone in the kingdom should see what happens to someone who doesn't bow to me, Hiranyakashipu. Holika was ready to do whatever she needed to do. She sat on the pyre. She took Prahlad onto her lap and she said, light the fire. She was confident nothing would happen to her. The people in the kingdom began to whisper, it's really wrong that he's doing that. He's, he's, Prahlad is such a little boy. How could he? And then they started talking about the things that Prahlad had said. You know, it's true. I, I mean, the king isn't within us making our hearts beat. That's someone else. That power is someone else. Prahlad has really made us think. And they watched anxiously as the fire was lit and the flames began to burn and they got higher and higher and they began to cover the little boy on his aunt's lap and holika started to laugh an evil laugh ha, 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 i love my boon and she said hmm, is it getting hot now but Prahlad kept his eyes closed om namo narayanaya and he knew that the same flames that were in agni were this were powered by his vishnu and soon holika began to sense that she wasn't, she wasn't feeling cool as usual in fire. She was 
starting to feel hot and she was starting to burn herself. And everybody watched as Holika herself in the midst of this holy fire began to burn and she turned to ash. And soon only Prahlad was sitting there in the middle of the flames singing Om Namo Narayanaya. And the, the kingdom, people of the kingdom cheered and they threw dust up into the air saying, holy God, holy, holy, Prahlad is okay. And Prahlad walked off of the fire and into the palace again. Hiranyakashipu by this point was seething with anger. And he said to Prahlad, stand in front of me, answer some questions. Tell me, where is this Vishnu of yours? This Narayan that you keep talking about? Where is he? Prahlad said, Father, he's everywhere. The, 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 the sky around us, this teeny tiny ant, that huge elephant and the lions in the jungle, he's everywhere. Oh, really? Yes, Father. And that's not all. He's inside you and he's inside me. Why can't you understand? Even all your strength comes from Narayan, comes from the God who created this entire world, the God who preserves this world. Is that so? You're teaching me. Hiranyakashipu picked up his mace, his gada, and he pointed to a pillar. There, that iron pillar over there, that pillar that helps hold up my palace. Is your Narayan in that pillar? Yes, Father, I just told you he's everywhere. Well, why don't you see what I'm going to do to your knot iron? And Hiranyakashipu took his gada, his mace, and he slammed it into the pillar, and the pillar split into two. And from within the pillar emerged a tremendous being. The people in the kingdom gathered around. They let out a roar, and echoing their roar was the roar of a half lion half man. The head was that of a lion. He emerged from the pillar with the body of a man and he was Narasimha. He roared loudly and grabbed Hiranyakashipu, dragged him out right where the palace ended. And he said, Hiranyakashipu, we are neither inside your palace nor are we outside. That takes care of that part of your boon. Look at the sky. It is not day and it is not night. It is twilight. The sun has set, but it's not night yet. And look at me, Hiranyakashipu. I am half beast and half man. I am Narasimha. And I am the power that is in all these people around you. I am the power that is in your sun. I am the power that sustains this universe. And I am going to destroy you and your ego, your sense that you are are the root of this all. And I'm going to do it not with any weapon, but with my nails, with my claws. And Hiranyakashipu cried out as Narasimha laid Hiranyakashipu on his lap and tore him to pieces. Prahlad closed his eyes, shaking with fear, but also with faith. He knew that Narayan, Narasimha wouldn't hurt him. Narasimha laid his hand on Prahlad's head and he said, you kept your faith even though your father was cruel and delusional and your father didn't realize who he was and who I am and who you were. Now you can rule the kingdom and give everyone their gods back, give everyone their faith back and remind them that this power that sustains the universe is within each and every one of them. And so Narasimha blessed Prahlad and the people of the kingdom roared in joy. And from that day on, they celebrated holy as the day when goodness and devotion and faith triumphed over evil and delusion. I hope you enjoyed the story. I wish you all a very happy Holi and I'll see you next time.